All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another Exivia Live session, Business Intelligence Services, presented by Donald Volansky and Steve Siebert. My name is Alex Killian, and I'm the video editor and digital media specialist here on Exivia's marketing team. Uh, before we dive into our content today, just a little bit about our company. Exivia started in 1992, and since then we've grown to more than 325 employees worldwide and we've established a reputation as a company delivering cutting edge IT solutions and technology support for our clients' very specific requirements. We've got offices in Colorado, Missouri, New Jersey, New York, Texas, and Virginia. Uh, for our business intelligence practice, we have over 100 combined years of BI implementation, consulting, and training experience and we've performed hundreds of implementations impacting thousands of users over the years. Our BI experts are experienced in Microsoft, TIBCO, and information builders, analytic tools. Um, if you have any questions come up during this live session, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A section or comment on our YouTube live stream, and we'll do our very best to answer those at the end of the session. And also all of the links referenced in this presentation will be available in the description box under our video when we finish here. Today we'll be hearing from Donald Volansky, our lead digital strategist, and Steve Sieber, the Senior Director of Business Intelligence for Extivia. Uh, Don and Steve, can you introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about yourselves? Sure, thanks Alex. So I've been involved one way or the other with technology for the past 25 years. 21, 21 years I had spent at Budweiser managing B2B and B2C sites. The past four years, I've probably represented Extivia, um, you know, providing business development um, uh, initiatives uh, for a multitude of accounts. All right. Thank you, Don. And Steve, uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Sure, I've been with uh, Extivia for about four years now. Um, and before that, I was with uh, uh, SeaWorld and uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and Dell Computer. Um, at each position, I was uh, involved in uh, some form of business intelligence, data warehousing, and uh, I'm happy to be here today and uh, participate in this webinar. Awesome, we're happy to have you. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and pass over to Don and uh, take it away. All right. Alex, again, thank you. So um, just as kind of a reminder, this is our second installation or edition of our BI microcast. Our first edition covered demystifying um, business intelligence. And in this session, we're going to discuss BI services. So I'd like to start off with kind of a, a reminder of what is business intelligence. And really, it's, it's simpler than what it sounds. Um, basically, business intelligence takes various sources of data, both internal and external, to help organizations make better decisions on a daily basis. The right technology is key, but as a reminder, BI is more than just technology. It also includes processes and people. Um, so the deal about technology is that that is the enabler to pull the right information, making it clear and easy for a businesses and users to understand the information and use it to their fullest advantage. Um, business intelligence leverages software and services to transform data into actionable intelligence that informs an organization's strategic and tactical business decisions. BI tools access and analyze data sets and present analytical findings via reports, summaries, dashboards, graphs, charts, maps, all allowing users uh, the detailed intelligence that is um, available around any given business. So BI services, there are quite a few different areas and we'll delve into each of these individually. Uh, but we're here really today over the next few minutes to discuss you know, what goes into requirements gathering, the assessment and roadmaps phase, a BI strategy, your enhancements, the tool selection and implementation, 
uh, ETL development, extract, transform, and load the importance of bringing in data from various sources, custom data warehouse solutions, training, reporting and analytics, solution development. So we'll jump into uh, each of these, starting off with requirements. So really with requirements, it is asking the right questions. Um, what is it that is important for, for any BI uh, initiative when it comes to requiring, um, when it comes to gathering requirements? Um, if you ask the right questions, you're going to certainly address the business data, technical and usage needs, as well as current and future needs. You'll be able to take advantage of the land and expand approach. Save time by gathering these requirements only once. The requirements packages will be used both in the selection phase as well as the implementation phase. And there really are uh, four main areas when it comes to requirements gathering. There's the business assessment, there is a data assessment, a technology assessment, and a user group assessment. And again, those areas all fit into um, the thought that was mentioned earlier that BI is more than just the technology. It also has to include the people and the processes. If you notice in the right-hand corner on each of the next several slides, we're going to include a tip around the given topic. Um, for this one, tip number one, we're say, reminding you to focus on your business needs and ask the right questions. Moving on to assessments and roadmaps. So very important next phase in any, pro, uh, any BI project is understanding um, the, the roadmap ahead of you and how best to assess. There are five major steps uh, in, along this journey, which would consider your structure, your, identi your identifying needs, your choosing the right BI platform, implementation or building out the roadmap, and then of course measuring your success. Um, it is you know, important to consider um, before jumping into any given project to consider the right partner that will help you along the way, as well as considering a, a proof of concept phase that, that really kind of helps uh, determine the, the best route to take. There isn't necessarily one clear defined path. Um, there typically are many different ways to, to tackle a BI um, initiative, um, but really sticking to these guidelines will help you move down the path. Uh, tip number two, we want to remind you, state the business goal and IT goal side by side. It would be a huge mistake if you didn't consider both aspects when completing any assessment, it cannot just be driven solely by IT. The BUs or the businesses have to have a stake in the initiative. So let's talk a little bit about strategy. Um, here, again, as I just mentioned, nice segue, you want to give business ownership you know, over. Uh, they, they have to have a, a role in the overall strategy. What are their needs and wants? Uh, additionally, you're going to want to monitor uh, BI use and adjust as necessary. Perhaps you're just starting um, a BI initiative and you have nothing other than internal dialogue um, and thoughts about where to go. However, you might find yourself further down the path where you have uh, existing systems um, and you want to refine or revamp the use of the current BI. So depending upon where you are in that path, it's, it's important to, to understand and to know what capabilities you want and what capabilities you have. Um, along the way, you'll definitely want to validate, 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 look at the information uh, which in technology has a way of shifting and changing all the time. Um, you know, again, put the business problem first. What is it that you're trying to solve with your data? 
you're going to want to prioritize and build in for process improvement. Um, we say here, upscale the citizen data scientist. It's important to, because there are so few data scientists within any organization, it's really important that, that you help your end users um, so that they can in turn give you the information that you're looking for to build out the right BI platform. And again, which kind of goes hand in hand, empower your staff to, to tell their story with the data available. Um, tip number three, BI success requires more than just a strong technology platform. So enhancements. Um, you know, here what we're really talking about are several different areas that enhancements can focus on within a given uh, organization. There's the sales representative role. You know, what, what is it that they need um, in order to be successful? There's the fin financial analyst aspect. Um, you know, they, they need to drive overall performance and improvement. Do they have the right tools and the right data allowing them to make those decisions or provide those? There's a marketing manager aspect to this. Um, what is it that, that they need so that they're tracking the right customers and providing uh, the right price points? Of course, there's a pr product development aspect where, um, you know, people need to understand from a regional standpoint or, or segment differences that, that allow for higher pricing to create the opportunities. And lastly, the executive side, you know, bringing the right direction from the teams above that will allow the actual data uh, to be provided rather than just guessing about where a business stands. Uh, tip number four here, BI tools can lead to two to 4% in gross margin improvement. Tool selection and implementation. Um, you know, there are a, a few steps here. Uh, you're going to want to, again, define the strategy and overall goals. Uh, oftentimes, it's recommended to provide a requirements analysis, uh, whether that be a workshop or internal meetings, whiteboard sessions to really fully understand what the environment is currently and where you want to be within the future. It's never a good idea to focus on simply today, but to really consider where will, where will we be down the path. Um, you know, software evaluation, and then, of course, implementation of the product. Um, when it comes to software evaluation, there are a multitude of tools out there. So having the right uh, vendor partner involved to walk through the tools that you believe are best for you is key. And then seeking and, and helping uh, from the outside looking in when it comes to the implementation of the product selected. I had mentioned earlier that a proof of concept is highly recommended. Um, and that's, that's something that you would want to consider. So tip number five when it comes to tools and implementation, selecting the right software is key to any successful project. ETL development. Um, in this area, again, this is extract, transform, and load. Not every BI initiative involves ETL. Depending upon where you're bringing your information in from, the disparate uh, sources of data that are available, you're going to want to make sure to remember things along the way, such as tracking the bottlenecks, loading incremental amounts of data, partitioning large tables to help uh, processing time, remove extraneous data. You know, there's this concept that within a, a data warehouse solution that it, it shouldn't have everything. You wanna make sure that if there is noise involved, take that and, and push it aside. Uh, you wanna consider caching the data and then of course process in parallel. Tip number six here, better to start small and grow as you go. Technology shifts and changes uh, all the time. And so to try to spend an inordinate amount of time working up the exact plan and then start the implementation is oftentimes um, uh, a little troublesome because you, know, you want more of that agile approach to be able to adjust in turn as uh, the, the situation calls for. 
custom warehouse solutions. Um, here, really, uh, investing in a data warehouse design, the process uh, rarely bears fruit in the short term, and I had mentioned that earlier. It's more appropriate to be guided, you know, by the the um, by looking out three to five years and say, okay, here's where we are today. Where do we want to be in the future? And then really build out towards those goals. So determine your business objectives, collect and analyze the information, you know, identify core business processes, excuse me, construct a conceptual model that stands to reason, uh, locate the correct data sources and figure out what needs to be done around bringing those sources in load frequency, right? Does the data need to be more real-time or can it be updated on a daily or weekly basis? And then implement the plan. So tip number seven here is, you know, basing a data warehouse design on the current business needs uh, is never a, a good idea. Here you want that fore, forethought to, f to try to really determine best where is it that we're going as an organization. So training, um, there are a number of different uh, elements when it comes to training. Uh, from a strategy standpoint, write a strategic outline, right? Um, you, you're going to want to define the, the, uh, the structure for what's right for your corporation. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to the education process, make sure that you're announcing and scheduling your meetings. Host live user trainings. Uh, host quarterly QA sessions if if that makes uh, sense for your organization. You're going to want to make sure that you're building reusable tools, right? Record user trainings uh, that can be shared after the fact. Um, you're going to want to, you know, when it comes to uh, building out or promoting, build an FAQ where there's a, a place where your folks can can go and find uh, answers to questions uh, pretty pretty quickly. Um, it's always a good idea to consider when it comes to the promotion of it as well, monthly customer newsletters uh, to allow yourself to share key feature updates. It's kind of a cool idea perhaps to put a TV in your lunchroom or in common meeting areas where you're able to provide dashboards uh, and, and give some, some visual cues to the uh, information that you're bringing forth. Um, and then really to iterate, uh, agree on the process, document any questions that, that come from the various uh, workshops or the input delivered back by your users. Um, schedule sessions with each user type to make sure that you're covering everybody within your BU. Tip number eight, create a training tool checklist that will absolutely uh, help keeping you on track along the way. Reporting and analytics. You know, so for this area, really, it is important to choose the right tool. I mentioned earlier, there isn't one. There are a ton of different options to choose from. Are you looking for more of a, a tool for a business analyst or are you looking for more of a tool uh, that provides uh, self-service reporting to a, a multitude of users within the organization? You know, ask the business units what their needs are and, and have them buy into the, the formulation of the KPIs um, so that they feel that they have a vested interest. Um, you, you're going to want to create uh, and maintain data integration layers. Uh, you certainly want to visualize the output. That's key to any BI uh, implementation or solution. And utilize uh, rule-based BI reporting, right? So one, one report, it isn't one size fits all. You should consider a number of different reports for the various uh, users within your company. Tip number nine, keep your data clean. The old saying, garbage in, garbage out. If it, if it isn't uh, exact and refined on the onset, the information that is reported down the road um, will not be as useful or beneficial. Solution development. Uh, of course, do your homework. Uh, executive and management teams need to meet and decide uh, what the exact data is. Uh, determine what data you do have and what data you do not have. Um, you want to make sure that when you're forming the team, gather the right people, 
right? So pick a team that's cross-functional with data experts, data analysts, data scientists, um, and, and of course, business experts, uh, include even bringing outside consultation into the team to help you along the way. Um, incorporating your data Re requirements really should uh, dictate the data feeds, right? So um, to clarify, an organization needs a large feed to serve um, all instead of just uh, hundreds of operational, you know, uh, folks. Um, if, if you're trying to serve all, you're going to find yourself in a situation where the system just is having a difficult time processing. Um, choosing the right tools. Uh, I've mentioned this repeatedly throughout so far that th there are there are more uh, tools out there than than one can imagine. So depending upon what needs you have in house, really should define what tool is right for you. Are you more of a localized environment? Do you have more of a, a cloud setting? Um, you know, the, these are just some of the basic questions uh, that need to be answered up front. And, and again, don't focus that question and answer on where the company is today, but where will the company be three to five years down the road? And then, um, you know, who will be using the, the tools? Um, it's very often that, especially in larger organizations, there are actually multiple BI tools that are employed for, for various areas. So it isn't that you have to hone in and make a single tool selection. You might find yourself in a situation that, that calls for two or three different options for various uh, units, business units within the company. Tip number 10, BI is more than technology. It also includes practices and people. So really, uh, from the standpoint of what we wanted to cover today around services, uh, that, that's the, uh, the short end of it. Uh, we would like to thank you for paying, uh, paying us a visit and giving us a few minutes of your time. We're making available again our 14-point BI checklist for download. Also, we want to remind you that we do produce and push out blogs. We have a few out there already around what does business intelligence do and which Power BI license is right for you. Now, with that, I'd like to bring Steve Sieber into the conversation. Uh, I believe that we have some questions for Steve to answer. Yes, we've gotten several questions coming during the live session here. Um, first up, what are typical BI requirements for or of Xtivia customers? Uh, well, the uh, requirements will vary by customer, but typically we see um, things like uh, pulling data from their various source systems, um, enhancing that uh, source system data, like adding descriptions to codes, adding processing dates, calculating various values. Uh, Users would want us to uh, uh, clean the data for them before we load it into a, uh, uh, a data warehouse, um, uh, build out the data warehouse by creating uh, different dimensions, date, geography, product, vendor, age, or just typical uh, ones that uh, we have to create. Uh, then they'll want us to deliver reports and dashboards and visualizations via a web browser of some type and implement a, uh, uh, some will want us to implement a self-service BI solution for them. So in general, it's, it's th that area, uh, maybe not each of those or uh, some combination of those, uh, the customers will ask us to um, um, define the requirements for and help them build out. Hey, Steve, are, are there, out of those BI requirements, would you suggest that Extivia has a sweet spot anywhere? Um, I think our sweet spot is in um, ETL. Um, that's the uh, uh, um, building out the, uh, the, the data loads, uh, building the data warehouse, and then laying a uh, business intelligence uh, product on top of that data to uh, deliver uh, visualizations and uh, reports. Thanks. All right, uh, next question we've got come in. Um, where do BIA initiatives typically run into trouble? Well, there are uh, several red flags you can look out for when you're starting a BI initiative. A few are, um, I think uh, Don has kind of touched on these, uh, lack of executive sponsorship. Uh, you really need somebody at the executive level to um, uh, 
uh, help um, shepherd the, the, the project along. Because uh, typically these can these can cross uh, department boundaries and someone to uh, help wrangle the, uh, the the various players and, and uh, keep the, the process moving forward. Another area to look out for is trying to do too much at once. Um, don't want to boil the ocean uh, is a phrase that people use. Um, try to uh, uh, pick out the uh, uh, the sweet spots and deliver. Um, quickly so that you start selling uh, return on investment um, in a timely manner. Right. You want to eat, you want to eat the elephant by the tail, right? right. Small bites. Yeah. Um, and uh, another area to look out for is uh, you have to make sure that uh, business user users are involved in the, in the project early and often um, they have, they really have the, uh, the uh, information that you're going to need to, to build a product that actually um, delivers uh, solutions that they they want and need, um, so uh, make sure that you bring in the business users uh, early into the process. All right. Um, our next question: How important is the ETL process in a BI solution? Uh, on a large uh, BI uh, in initiative, ETL is a foundation of the solution. Um, so it's critically important in those areas to, uh, to build an ETL process that's efficient, uh, robust, uh, self-documenting, and can easily handle rerunning loads when issues occur. Um, basically, uh, the, the purpose of the ETL process is to um, bring the data in, notify you when there are, there are issues, and notify you where those issues occur. Um, you want to be able to verify or, or validate that your load loads ran um, completely and accurately each day. And if there's a problem, you need to be able to uh, diagnose that quickly and easily. All right. Um, I think we have time for one more question here. Um, what types of data warehouse architectures does Xtibia support? We support the, uh, you know, the industry standards, Kimball and Enman uh, models. Uh, we also support a hybrid of, of those two models, and we also uh, support the data vault model, which is geared towards fast and flexible data loads uh, that don't require re-engineering when your source data model changes because of business events like uh, acquisitions and mergers. Hey, Alex, I'd, I'd like to ask one more uh, of Steve that, that I received here. You just touch on uh, which reporting and analytic tools that Extivia supports as well, please. Sure. Uh, well, we have strategic relationships with Microsoft, TIPCO, and information builders, and we can support reporting and analytic tools from, from those vendors. Um, we can also reach out to other vendors if necessary and uh, uh, support those tools. We've, we've done uh, work in the past with with IBM, for example, um, but uh, Microsoft, Tipco, and Information Builders are, are our um, uh, main partners. Uh, Microsoft, we support uh, my, uh, Power BI, uh, SSRS, and uh, SSAS. Um, on Tipco, we support the uh, um, Spotfire uh, tool and Jaspersoft. And Information Builders, uh, we have experience with uh, uh, web focus and data migrator for ETL processes. Thank you. Sure. All right. It looks like that's about all the time we have for today. Um, thank you all for joining us. And if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Don's email is here on the screen. And um, as always, this live session will be available on our YouTube channel um, immediately following this. Uh, Don and Steve, thank you so much for taking the time this morning and all that information you shared. Our pleasure. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Don.